things are much better for Kamala Harris than they were for Joe Biden. That sounds almost obvious to say, but your explanation of what happened this summer is right. I mean, it was a dramatic shift in the American political landscape and voters noticed Kamala Harris is on better footing than Joe Biden ever was across every single one of these states. That's the good news for Democrats. The challenge for them, the advantage or the, the possibility for Trump maybe, is the fact that a lot of these states are really, really close. I mean, Arizona's tied, Georgia's basically tied, Michigan's close, uh, North Carolina and Nevada are pretty close. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Kamala Harris looks to be in an okay position, but those are also tight races. This contest isn't over. Maybe it was over before Joe Biden left the race, but that's what's changed in the last few weeks is this is a real race. Yeah, which indicates that it's going to be a rough and tumble for the next 60-something uh, days, Eli, leading up to uh, Election Day. When we consider, though, the idea that even though these are still incredibly tight margins, she is out polling where Joe Biden was, what do we attribute that to? Is this Democratic voters who are more likely to turn out for a different candidate? Is this independents who seem to have been swayed from being a potentially a double hater to at least tolerating her? Is this other demographics like black voters, Latinos? What does the breakdown of the data show us? It's all of the above. I mean, look, Joe Biden's problem in when he was in the contest was he was not performing as well with his own 2020 voters as Donald Trump was. Kamala Harris has reversed that. We're seeing what everybody's calling a vibes shift happen in this contest. And one of the questions we asked in this survey kind of underscores that. We asked voters if they were voting, we asked Democratic uh, presidential candidate supporters if they were voting for the candidate or against Trump. And when we asked about Harris this time around, they were 15 points more likely across the swing state map to ascribe that positive motivator to their vote than they were to Biden when we asked back in April. I mean, we were all at our Democratic National Convention in Chicago. We saw the energy in that room of core activist supporters. But you know we're seeing that across the country. She was down in Southern Georgia. There were lines in th that rural community around the blocks mm -hmm. trying to go see her. Clearly something is happening there. She's getting so much positive media attention that is breaking through to the public. I mean, we're not, we've not necessarily seen a convention bump. And that's probably because she got her bump already when she launched her campaign <laughs> after Joe Biden dropped out. Well, fair enough. Maybe uh, maybe she already peaked, if you will, but it does seem that at least that peak has turned into a plateau rather than something that has uh, gone back down the hill. Eli, I also want to zero in on, on the findings here regarding the economy and specific economic issues, including help for the middle class and housing, where it's not just that Harris is doing better than Joe Biden was on those issues. She is out polling Donald Trump. What do you make of that? And where within the kind of economic indicators is Donald Trump uh, still clearly ahead, knowing he has been trying hard to campaign on this issue? Well, I mean, the biggest thing going for Donald Trump is the fact that the voters' perceptions of how the economy is performing haven't really changed very much. I mean, when Joe Biden was in the race, 72 percent said it was on the wrong track. Now, 69 percent say that um, the folks who see prices as increasing across the swing state map have not improved. That's clearly an advantage for Donald Trump. What Kamala Harris has seen is she is not totally associated with Joe Biden being in the White House as one might expect. I mean, she has seen her trust over Donald Trump um, in a better place than Joe Biden's was when it comes to the economy. I think she halved Donald Trump's lead on the economy and our uh, swing state tracking. It's not just the economy, by the way. I mean, we're seeing that about mm -hmm. every single issue. Voters are much happier about her. They're disassociating her with the negativity that she is, they associated with, with Joe Biden. Um, you're right about Kamala Harris on issues like housing. That's clearly a good issue for uh, for Democrats this year. If Donald Trump can focus on the inflation issue, though, there is wide appetite among the swing state electorate for him to talk about that. The problem with his campaign, this has been the problem since he's been on the political stage, is he gets into sideshows. I mean, he spent the week fighting with Arlington National Cemetery this week. That's not going to be a winning message for an electorate hungry for answers about inflation. 
Well, and maybe we'll get more of those answers leading up uh, to the debate or on the debate stage on September 10th. Uh, Eli, if we consider the kind of themes we're likely to hear from these candidates, and, and frankly, we heard Kamala Harris sitting many of these themes, including housing in the middle class uh, last night in that interview on CNN, something else that she has talked a lot about and, and really dominated the convention in Chicago last week is this idea around freedoms, not just reproductive freedom, but others as well. And it, it was striking to see here swing state voters Trust her on that issue as well by a five-point margin. This is kind of a departure of the way that Democrats and Republicans usually can lay claim to the freedom issue. I know. I, I spent so much time in the early 2010s at Tea Party rallies talking about freedom with a bunch of conservatives. <laughs> I think that you know, Kamala yeah. Harris has done a lot of work, um, maybe with Beyonce's help, to try to reclaim the mantle of freedom for the Democratic Party. Uh, I think a lot of that discussion has been centered around abortion rights, and that is a big issue for a number of swing state voters. It's not the number one issue for a lot of people, but it is for a number of people. And those are core kind of Democratic voters. And her advantage on that issue is massive. She leads Trump by 21 points on that issue. That's clearly a good issue for her. And I think we've seen a lot of coverage recently of Donald Trump realizing it's not a good issue for him. I think it's been very clear since the Supreme Court overturned the Roe v. Wade abortion rights that Donald Trump has been not wanting to engage on that issue as much as possible. I think that Democrats, I think that the state of Florida is going to make it where he's going to have to. And I think that's going to be a topic of discussion at the debate where we're really going to see uh, some, some news develop. Yeah, Donald Trump not really ready with an answer yet as to how exactly he's voting on that uh, six-week uh, abortion issue in, in Florida, where, of course, he will be casting his vote. I do want to ask, finally, Eli, because we've talked a lot about the people leading the ticket, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, but they do have running mates who have been out there. Tim Walls was with her in that interview on CNN last night. This, of course, is a poll done now that we know that he is he is running beside her. How is Walls factoring in to the calculus for Harris and J.D. Vance for Trump, for that matter? Well, Tim Walls is very popular. I think Kamala Harris, who's also very popular, more popular than Joe Biden or Donald Trump have been since we started tracking this back in 2022. Tim Walls pretty much matches her popularity. I think that makes him a very good campaign asset. And it's with all sorts of groups. It's with men, it's with women, it's with voters of color, it's with white people. Tim Walls is a good asset. Um, J.D. Vance, I, I, I don't know how much his candidacy probably matters here. I mean, Donald Trump steals the show. It is a Trump show when they're out and about. Um, the, the little asides get a lot of attention on online. Some of his J.D. Vance's campaign missteps. I don't know that those are going to like rock the world here, given that Donald Trump is at the top of the ticket. But on the other side of the ballot, I mean, Kamala Harris found a good running mate who can be an asset on the campaign trail and Governor Tim Walls.